pozarządy. Program o organizacjach pozarządowych. Let me remind you first who we are and what are we doing here. We are volunteers in European Voluntary Service, so EVS, uh, EVS project, project in Krakow, and we are staying here for nine months. There is 29 of us all together, and we are working in different hosting organizations, like in kindergartens, in a school, in a library, and in the office of our coordinating organization, Stream. Stream Association is one of the biggest organizations working with European Voluntary Service in Poland, and it leads a vast number of diverse projects in Poland and beyond its borders, mainly in the field of culture and intercultural education. They aim at developing awareness, national and European, while not neglecting its regional levels. The association initiates and promotes all forms of youth activities, and they reach that goal by organizing trainings, seminars, conferences, public events, meetings, and youth exchanges. Okay, so now you are reminded of who we are and what we are doing here. You know a little bit about our organization. And we're just gonna take a short break before we start with our topic for today. I said in the beginning that we are both part of a big EVS project. We have 29 volunteers all together. And there are also mentors, our assistant coordinators, our uh, coordinators, and many, many other people in our uh, association. Uh, how how do you feel about that? Is, is that different from, from being at home uh definitely it's different like because there are so many of us there is like people from so many countries so it's really different to being like back in finland because there i usually spend my time just only with finnish people and here it's like so intercultural and yeah it's different but it's really nice to have so many people there is always some some plans and we're doing everything together and organizing some trips and stuff like that. Was it confusing in the beginning? Because in our project, like I said, we have 29 volunteers, but we all come from different countries. So we have 15 different countries in our project. We have 15 different languages, 15 different people, well, 29 different people. But how, how does that feel for you? Did you feel confused or was it like um, something refreshing in your life? Um, I don't know. It was nice because as I told, I spent mostly just my time with Finnish people, so it was really nice to like get to know different people and uh, different habits. But it's a bit confusing also, of course, because there is so many countries, so also everybody have like different habits and way of life. So yeah, so also a bit confusing. Okay, so like you said, you are from Finland. Um, what are the biggest cultural differences that you notice between people in Finland and here? Maybe something about traditions or just everyday life? Mm, I don't know what would be the biggest, but... And here, because uh, my free time I spend mostly with the other volunteers, so I haven't spent that much time with Polish people, but uh, I don't know. For example, at work, I... Uh, there is the the kids here in Poland. We go out only like uh, for a short wa walk mm -hmm. once a day. But like for example in Finland, uh, the kids in kindergartens they go out like twice per day for one or two hours. So it's much more than here. And like some small things like for example food in here they have always the soup and then the main dish and in Finland not there is on, only the main dish always so that was also a bit weird for me when I came here mm -hmm. and uh, some stuff like that in the everyday life of course it's different but I don't know anything bigger than that okay um but now I have a question about culture shock. Uh, first, let's define what it is. So it's the feeling of disorientation experienced by someone when they are suddenly subject to unfamiliar culture, culture, way of life or set of attitudes. So it's really depending on the individual. It, it's very subjectively experienced. Uh, do you know anyone who has culture shock or did you have it sometimes? Did you feel it? Mm, I, uh for me, it I think it wasn't that strong, but of course there is 
when it's a new country, there is like different things. So like a new language and uh, different things. So for example, with the language, it's it's of course a bit, uh, for example, like shopping, you go to shop and then everything is in Polish. You don't understand anything. So it's gonna take time to like figure out what are the products. So uh, things like that uh, made a little bit of a cultural shock. But for me, it wasn't that strong, I think. Yeah, it's really hard when you can't uh, see the brands, you don't know the brands, so you don't know what you usually buy and what you can buy here, that it's similar to those things. Mm -hmm. And for me, I cannot recognize the names of the shops. Yeah. So you're not completely sure what it is. Yeah. If you just see it across the road. Um, or just, you know, stuff like waiting for the tram. Mm -hmm. And then you need to recognize the names of the stops. Yeah. And just simple things in everyday life exactly. that are a little bit off. Like everything is fine, but you see like slight differences. Um, but still, you are from Finland, so you are used to the cold. So this yeah. winter wasn't so bad for yeah. you. Yeah. No, it wasn't that bad. It's been so warm winter here this year. So yeah, so far, mm -hmm. maybe so we'll far. have some more <laughs> cold weather next week or next month. Um, yeah, but I can imagine that someone who is from from Spain or from uh, south of France, maybe mm -hmm. they can have a big problem adjusting to the cold, to the yeah. snow, to below minus, to below zero temperatures. Yeah, and then you need bigger clothes and mm -hmm. sweaters and everything. So it, it it's it's different, you know. It's just the everyday life. It's it's really different. Um, but what do you think, what's a good idea? How can you cope with culture shock? What do you think would be helpful? Uh, well, I think it's good not to say, stay alone, like at home and like think that, oh no, where am I? Like, what is this? And it's like important to stay connected with people and do something you like and also have your own habits with the like all new you have there. Mm -hmm. And also it's important to like stay in touch with your family but also like not think about that too much not too so much. Yeah. so that you remember that you are not there with your family or here and you have to like get used to it that yeah. everything's for, different for, for people who are really tightly connected to their families maybe it can be a problem at first mm -hmm. if they're far away from home and they have all of these new people yeah. who don't belong to their culture to their language and then they have a habit of just talking to their family a lot which is of course a good and a nice thing to to keep in touch but you have to be present here because you have so many people around you and really i think krakow gives us a lot of opportunities to see different stuff, to, to go to different uh, activities, just like in, in sports and art and exhibitions and mm -hmm. um, ice skating yeah. uh, during winter. Uh, we should definitely go ice skating soon again. <laughs> uh, so I think we are lucky that we are in Krakow because the city is really diverse and literally whenever you feel bored, you just have to go out and yeah. there's always something somewhere. But also people who are maybe living or doing volunteering in the smaller places with smaller groups. Uh, like you said, it's important to find some activities that you like and also have your own habits. Um, you can always read a book or join some new club or, you know, there, there are a lot of possibilities. I mean, we live in the Internet era yeah. after all. <laughs> okay, so and what, do, do you think that uh, having Polish friends or friends wherever you are, like new friends from there, the culture that you're in right now is helpful? Uh, of course, uh, because they know the culture, so they can like show you what they're used to do here in Poland. And yeah, like we had uh, the opportunity to see Christmas here. Yeah. And Polish people, our mm. Polish friends, uh, really showed us a lot yeah. of traditions uh, and food, of course. Um, Okay, so I think this was very helpful. Maybe someone who is listening is wondering what it's like to be in a country far away uh, with no people from your country. And it's important to know that you can always find somebody to connect with and uh, some activities and actions. We are continuing our conversation with Venla. So Venla, you said that you are just 18 years old and you decided to spend almost a year far away from home. 
How did that happen? Did you want to do that? Did you want it for some time or was it like a very quick decision? Yeah, well, I was thinking like, what do I want to do after high school? And um, I really, I don't know until now, what would I like to study next? And also I didn't want to continue my studies like straight away after high school. Mm -hmm. And also I wanted to go like abroad to a different country for a longer time. And then I was just basically Googling like like opportunities to go abroad after high school. And then I found EVS and then I was like, yes, that's my thing. <laughs> and now you're here. Yeah. It's exactly the same thing, actually, that happened to me. We just did a lot of Googling and EVS mm -hmm. popped out. Um, but how did your family react? Um, they reacted well. They were really supportive and like saying that, yeah, you should go like it's a great opportunity and yeah, they supported me. No, oh, that's very nice. But when you found the, the project that you like and when you applied and when you saw that everything that you were trying to do is becoming real, was it a hard decision then to really leave? Because sometimes we have ideas, you know, in our head that we like, but then when they become reality, where it can be scary a little bit or confusing. Well, I think the decision wasn't that hard because I really wanted to do this. But of course, like when it, it got like closer and closer, it started like really stressed me out. And I was like, really, uh, I just got this feeling and now I'm really going. But um, still, I really wanted to do this. So the decision wasn't that hard. And so far, you are happy with your decision? Yeah, I'm very happy. <laughs> Good to hear that. Um, so would you recommend young young people like you, you know, people who are 18, 19, to go volunteering in their own country or even to go volunteer abroad? Definitely. I think this is like a really good opportunity to like see the world and mm, get to know yourself better and get to know new people and learn new things and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, and what do you think is the difference between people who do EVS like you did after high school and like actually many people in our project did and someone who is already uh, 25 or, or 28, 29, 30, who maybe already finished universities or they're already working? What do you think is the biggest difference? Uh, well, maybe the biggest difference is just if you go after high school, you, you don't like know that what do you want to do in the future? And if you're like a few, few years older, then you, if you like finished your university, you already, already like know maybe better like what do you want to do? Like. But what about experience? Do you think there's a difference in experience? Well, of course, if you, after high school, you're young like me. So I don't have that much experience like in general, but then so you actually get a lot of experience and skills here that you yeah. can yeah. use later. Yeah. But also I think people who already have their, their mind set up on something, maybe they need something to like refresh their life or maybe they're trying to find something new or really to find something where they would be happier. Yeah. So I think everyone can benefit no matter if you're 18 of or 28. Course. If you come here, just maybe for people who are 18 it's a little harder mm -hmm. uh, if you never lived alone yeah or without your parents did, definitely <laughs> did it take some time for you to get adjusted to the life without parents who are there every day uh well not that much like i moved away from my family when i was 16 but i moved to my with my grandparents so they were there but it was kind of, I've been like, lived alone with my parents for a while. So um, it wasn't completely new for me. Mm -hmm. But still now, if you want to, like, if something happens in the flat, you need some something fixed. It's not like you can call them yeah. and say, hey, come, come on over. <laughs> my electricity doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. But you have to figure it out by yourself. Yeah. And just, I mean, like using the washer, using mm -hmm. the, I don't know, if something happens, you know, like you have a burn fuse or something, you don't know what to do. So you have to cope with these new yeah. situations where you can't really call your parents or grandparents. 
So I think it's also a good experience because when you go home, not just you, but anyone, um, they have a lot of new experience and a lot of new maybe options for solving problems in yeah. their life. And it could be good. Um, but okay, tell me, what do you think that people who do who are doing the EVS uh, can gain from working in the organizations where they are working? What can they take home with them? Um, well, it depends where they are working. But of course, like we talked, uh, the skills in like everyday life, if you're young and you didn't live without your parents, and that's the first time, of course, you can learn like how to manage on your own. And then, of course, like new cultures and from your work depends what you're doing. Like me in kindergarten, it's like more skills, like how to uh, work with children and stuff like that in general in life, like learn to know yourself more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe even if you don't know by now, after VS, it can help you decide what you want to do. Yeah, definitely. Like get some ideas. What? What to do next? Yeah. And where to go? Um, what was the biggest challenge for you here personally? And now try to take everything into consideration, like your work and the moving and the new language and everything. What do you think was the biggest challenge? Uh, maybe the language for me, mm -hmm. because like the work I'm used to work with kids like before coming here. So uh, that wasn't new except the language. So the language barrier at work, it's always like uh, difficult situations when, for example, kid is crying and then they come to stay, tell to me, but then I don't understand. So if I understood, I could do something about it. But when I don't, then I can't really do anything about it just to tell the teacher. So, uh, yeah, the language for me. Yeah, I understand. It can be a big, a big challenge. Um, but you did learn how to cope with those situations. Yeah, it's now it's been now four months. So I've got used to those situations and like learned more how to communicate with the language barrier. Yeah, me too. Um, do you think that this whole experience of VVS and working abroad will, will change you? Definitely. Uh, I feel uh, f until now I've already like changed a little, like maybe get a bit more clear. What do I want to do in the future? And mm -hmm. I still have five months to go, so definitely, I think I will grow as a person. And yeah, maybe the picture will be more clearer. Yeah, more clear. Um, and you would recommend all the people to go volunteering, or what would you say to people who are thinking about it, but they're maybe scared or not sure? Yeah. Uh, if if you're like thinking about it, I think you should definitely go because it really can open like new doors for your life and really you can get the experience and it's really good opportunity yeah. like EVS. And also if you need a little break from your everyday life. Yeah, exactly. It's also a really, really good idea. Um, okay, thank you Medlan for answering all of this questions. Uh, we will take a break and listen to some more music. This is Jasmine Jordan and Possibilities.